Hey all, this is Mr. Alexander, and today I'm here to talk to you about the Unit 4 test review. I'm going to solve all these problems. We've got about 33 of them to do, so hold on, here we go. There is a square with four equal sides and a dilated square sitting next to it. If each side of the original square is increased by 5 inches, the new total area of the square will be 256 inches squared. Find the length the side of the original square. So essentially we've got a square and we've got this bigger square that's been dilated. And we know that the area of this square is 256 inches squared and we know that uh, if each of these sides is x then each of these sides is x plus 5. Since it's a square, all four sides are the same. And so, to find the area of the square, you simply take one side and square it. And we're told that the area is 256. So all we need to do here is solve for x, and we'll know the length of the side of the original square. So I'm going to start by taking the square root of both sides to give me x plus 5 equals, let's see, the two square root of 256 is 16. Now this is usually positive and negative 16, but since we know we can't have a negative side, I'm just going to limit it to positive 16. When you subtract uh, 5 from both sides, you get x equals 11 and that should, the units here are inches, and so I believe that's the answer, x equals 11. Alright, let's go on to number 2 here. Solve 4n times 5n minus 1 equals 0. Uh, this is a quadratic that's already been factored, and when you're already in factored form, all the hard work is done for you. So all we need to do is take each of these individual factors and set them equal to zero. So I'm going to set 4n equal to zero and 5n minus 1 equal to zero. And I'm going to simply solve. So when you divide by 4 on both sides, you get zero. Add 1, divide by 5 to get 1 fifth. This thing has two solutions, zero and 1 over 5. Number three says solve, and then we've got a quadratic in factored form again, x minus 7 and times 4x plus 3. So once in factored form, just go ahead and set each of the factors equal to 0. x minus 7 equals 0, 4x plus 3 equals 0. Uh, so when I solve these, add 7 to, both, to this side to get x equals positive 7 and then subtract 3, divide by 4 to get negative 3 quarters or point, negative 0.75 if you prefer. All right. Number 4, find the area of the unshaded region. So this stuff on the outside. Um, and we're supposed to assume here that these are squares. So if I know that I've got this thing's a square, that means all four of these sides are 2x plus 7, and all these sides are x, then what I can do is I can take the area of the big square, so we'll call that the big area, and I can subtract off the area of the smaller one. And that should give me uh, the area of the unshaded region. So the area of the big square simply 2x plus 7 squared, and I want to subtract off x squared. Uh, well, this is the spot where a lot of people are going to try and make a mistake, but remember that this means 2x plus 7 times 2x plus 7 minus x squared. So you're going to want to foil that out. You're going to do 2x times 2x, which is 4x squared, and then you'll want to do 2x times 7, which is 14x. 
and then 7 times 2x, which is 14x, and then four, 7 times 7 is 49, and we still got that minus x squared there. Well, at this point, we're simply combining like terms, and what we're going to do is I see we've got a 4x squared and a negative 4x squared, so that's going to turn into 3x squared. I've got a 14x and a 14x, so that's 28x, and I've still got that plus 49. So the area of the unshaded region is this quantity, 3x squared plus 28x plus 49. In number 5 here, we're supposed to solve a quadratic that has not been factored, uh, like they were in numbers 2 and 3, so we need to have a decision to make. Whenever you see a quadratic you're told to solve, you should either try graphing it, or you should try uh, factoring it, or you should put it through the quadratic formula. Well, I happen to know just by looking at this that I can factor it. And the way that I know that is that I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to, let's see, a times c is 1 times 26 is 26. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 26, but add to the b value, which is negative 15. Oops, that's supposed to be a plus sign. So two numbers that multiply to 26 but add to negative 15. I could factor that as x minus 13 times x minus 2 because negative 13 and negative 2 add to positive 26, but or sorry, add to negative 15 but multiply to positive 26. And when I set that equal to zero, all I have to do is set these factors equal to zero which means that x equals positive 13 and positive 2. And that's the solution. Now you could have done it either of those way, uh, those either way, other ways, sorry. You could have graphed it, you could have used the quadratic formula, and if you, you use those methods, you get the same answer. So it's just whatever works best for you. But the same first step always exists in factoring. No matter which method you pick, you should always factor out a common factor if you can. In number six, we can, because I see 5x squared minus 20x equals zero. So the first thing we should do is ask ourselves, is there something that these two terms have in common, or three as it may well be, that they that have in common that we could factor out? And I see that they have a common factor of a five and an x. So I'm going to factor out a 5x, and uh, that's gonna leave me with, let's see, 5x squared divided by 5x is just x and minus 20 divided by 5 is 4, x divided by x is 1, so now this thing's in factored form. Now you, you wouldn't have to make this jump if you didn't want to. You could plug that original into the quadratic formula, or you could graph it, that'd be fine. If you plug this into the quadratic formula though, just remember your c value equals 0. And usually when the c value equals 0, it's easier to factor like this, just in general. Not always, not always the case, but in this case it is. So I'm going to set that 5x equal to 0 and x minus 4 equal to 0 and I'm going to get the answer of x equals 0 comma positive 4. Those are my two solutions. So in number 7 over here we've got another quadratic and so we're faced with the same set of options. We can either use the quadratic formula, we can graph it, we can factor. Uh, but I always like to take out the common factor first regardless of what I do. And I can see that there's a 4, a 4, and an 8. So they have a common factor of a 4, so I'm going to go ahead and factor out that 4 to give me 4 times x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. Now this is looking like something that might be factorable because I'm thinking of the factors of negative 2 that add to positive 1 and the one that jumps out in my mind is 2 and negative 1. So if I rewrite this as x plus 2 times x minus 1 then I can see this in factored form. Now again didn't need to factor this if you didn't want to. You could just take this original one and type it right into the quadratic formula. If that's what you prefer to do, go ahead and do that. Sometimes that's easier. Uh, but here, 
All I need to do is set these factors equal to zero. You can ignore the four. You can just divide it out. Zero divided by four is just zero. And you're gonna end up with x equals negative two and positive one. So number eight here we have 2x squared plus 2x equals 8. Now before you solve, you should always set it equal to 0. 2x squared plus 2x minus 8, because you move that 8 over the other side, equals 0. Uh, now that might look a little factorable, but I went ahead and I graphed it here just to see. It doesn't look like this thing is crossing at negative 3 and positive 2. So this thing's probably not factorable. The way you can confirm that is if you go to the table, you're looking for zeros in the y column. And I'm not seeing any zeros over there. And if there aren't any, any zeros, that's usually an indication that you need to use the quadratic formula, which is what I'm going to do here. Uh, the first thing you should always do is identify your a, your b, and your c. and my a is 2, my b is 2, and my c is negative 8. So I'm just going to plug that directly into the quadratic formula. x equals negative b, which is negative 2, plus and minus the square root of b squared, which is 4, minus 4, times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 8, all divided by 2a, which is 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay, uh, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 8 is 64, that's a negative 8, so that means I've got 4 plus 64, which means I'm going to have x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 68 divided by 4. Uh, I can go ahead and reduce that square root of 68, I'm going to cheat a little bit, the way I like to do it is I like to do 68 divided by x squared and then when you graph it or sorry when you go to the table you're looking for the first set or first time the y is less than 1 which is right here <clears throat> and then head back up till you have a whole number for the x and a whole number for the y which appears to be right here you can reduce the square root of 68 to 2 root 17 negative 2 plus and minus 2 root 17 all divided by 4. Uh, now we can reduce this a little bit because I'm seeing this negative 2, this 2, and this 4. Those all have a common factor of a 2, which I'm going to factor out, which is going to give me, let's see, negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1 plus and minus the square root of 17 all divided by 2. So I just factored out a 2 there. Another way to write that if you prefer is negative 1 over 2 plus and minus the square root of square root 17 over 2. So either of those answers is acceptable. Um, on the test, you may see it either way. All right, let's go ahead and finish off this page now. Solve x squared plus 10x plus 25. First step, go ahead and set it equal to 0 by subtracting 4, 10x plus 21 equals 0. And so we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 21 but add to 10 if you're going to do it by factoring or you need to use quadratic formula. But I can see this thing's factorable because two numbers that add to 21 or sorry add to 10 but multiply to 21 are simply 7 and 3. So I've got x plus 7 and x plus 3 x equals negative 7 comma negative 3. So you can fact that, use a quadratic formula, graph it, whatever it takes to get the right values of x. Last one, 81x squared plus 25 equals 0. Uh, this one, if it was a minus, this would be the difference of two squares. It would be really easy to factor. But since it's a plus, it's not the difference of two squares, which means I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. And that's going to take me a minute or two to do. Which I'll, so I'll start the next video by doing this one. So we'll see you on video two.